Hi guys, this is Hero. How's everyone doing today? I just like him show. I just sub case it all. So today I'm going over Saturn's progressive transit in the sign of Aquarius, specifically in the Nakshatra of Shatabisha. Okay. Reason why is because this transit occurs between November 4th and sometime summer 2024. I believe end of June. The exact date will be in the video description. But for over 95% of it, it's in the Nakshatra of Shatabisha, okay? So I'm kind of going to go interchangeably back and forth between Saturn in Aquarius in the sign and then Saturn in the Nakshatra of Shatabisha, okay? So the video is kind of on both. Now, because there are obviously Shatabisha is in Aquarius and Saturn's in there for 90% of this transit, over, over 95%. Moving forward, so we know that Saturn has already gone through Shatabisha, or some of it, went back, or already gone through Aquarius, I should say, and then went back, and is now going forward again, right? So what's the difference now when it's going forward, before when it went forward the first time, or even now that, even recently since it's gone, uh, since it's finished going retrograde? One of the big things that's different now that are going forward is that the nodes are no longer involved. So what are the nodes? The nodes are Rahu and Ketu, right? Now, how are they not involved? Well, as you know, they just changed signs. Before, Ketu was in Libra, throwing a fifth aspect on Saturn, and Saturn was in Aquarius, throwing a third aspect on Aries. So Saturn has a heavy influence on Rahu, and Ketu has a heavy influence on Saturn, okay? So this makes it so that the thing Saturn does is very, very karmic, okay? So Saturn always represents, you know, things that you need to do, the karma, right? Uh, it owns Capricorn and Aquarius, naturally, which is all about, you know, doing things for yourself, doing things for your uh, for others that you need to do, right? However, when Ketu is involved, and especially when Saturn's also aspecting, oh, and Ketu influences Saturn, and uh, Saturn's also a uh, aspecting or influencing Rahu, there's a certain sense of some things in your life that you have to do. It's not, you don't even need to do them. You're going to be forced to do them when the nodes are involved, right? Uh, these things could be also a little bit more random in nature or more just random, spontaneous, these kind of energies. A little unorthodox, you can also even say. However, now that the nodes are gone, that forcing energy that's upon Saturn kind of goes away. So now it's just the karma that you need to do which is great and which is also very, very nice that it's going forward in the Nakshatra of Shatabisha only this round, okay? So it's literally only going forward pretty much in this Nakshatra. And this Nakshatra is a very different Nakshatra, okay? Why? There's a reason why Saturn is the most karmic planet and it owns the last two signs before Pisces, right? Pisces is the absolute last sign and it involves letting go of everything that you that came in this certain cycle zodiac cycle the pisces is the last one so it involves letting go of everything but you could say saturn the two owns the two signs before it does own the two signs before and you could say those two signs especially aquarius it's kind of like the sum of everything else you learned or had to do throughout the rest of the cycle. Let me give you an example. Aquarius is all about, um, in general, you could say karma is for others, right? Now, you could take the three signs before, Capricorn, Sagittarius, and Scorpio. Scorpio represents intuition, Sagittarius represents what you learn, and Capricorn represents your discipline. You need all three of these in order to successfully execute whatever you need to in Aquarius, right? You could even keep going. Libra is all about other people. So you need to be in, you know, interacting with other people in order to fulfill the karma related to them, right? So Aquarius in itself is a very, uh, very strong special sign, okay? Now, you take Shatta Bisha Nakshatra, which is, I'm not going to say the main Nakshatra of Aquarius, but it's the only Nakshatra that is fully in Aquarius, okay? This tells you this nakshatra, in a sense, is almost fully 
responsible for like the beginning of the end when it comes to this karmic cycle, right? So Saturn has a karmic cycle. This karmic cycle, in my opinion, is like whenever it goes around the whole zodiac belt. So from Aries all the way around Pisces. Shadda Bisha Nakshadra is kind of like the beginning of the end, okay? For those of you guys who know basketball, it's a, it's segregated into four, four quarters. Shadda Bisha Nakshadra is kind of like a couple minutes into the fourth quarter, around 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter, okay? It kind of, it's it sets the tone for the end, okay? It's a very big time that momentum can change and things like that, and you kind of... Take what you learn throughout the rest of the game and you got to make it happen, okay? And it's and it's still enough time that usually things could go either way, okay? So going back away from the basketball example, Saturn, who's responsible for all the karma that needs to happen, it's now in Shatabisha Nakshata, okay? And it's no longer under the influence of the nodes. So the nodes are kind of things that you had to do based off of past life karmas, whatever. It, 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 you you were forced to do some stuff. Now, Saturn has already kind of been in here for a little bit. So it's like energies are kind of synced in. But now the nodes are gone. And it's only going through Shatta Bisha and Nashita. So it's kind of giving you an opportunity to take care of whatever you need to right now. Okay? And there's another special thing in the sense that at the beginning of this transit, Saturn still aspects... Jupiter, the guru, okay? So it's like, it's able to get the guru on board very, very quickly. Okay, so your action is direct is directly influencing your thinking. So if you're acting appropriately and acting right, your thinking is going to exponentially go in the right direction. If you're acting wrong and thinking wrong, your thinking is going to exponentially go in the wrong direction, Okay. Especially since Rahu is kind of at the end of Pisces also, and Ketu is at the end of Virgo, you do not want your thinking to go in the wrong direction. Okay, let me just say that right now during this time. So, excuse me. Saturn here, it's basically a test of what you're made of. Are you really, if spiritual elevation, you know, increasing consciousness is your thing, it's, it's like, how much are you faking it? Because Aquarius is... Aquarius is, like I said, it's a fulfill of, of karma, right? If Karma is the main reason why we're here. And the whole reason, a lot of the reason why we, you know, get spiritually elevated and things like that is so we can become aware of what we should do. And what we should do is what our karma is, right? So it's basically like, hey, how much are we for real on this journey? Are we kind of just pretending and it's just a front? If so, I don't know how effective this trans is going to be. If it's really who you are, regardless of how conventionally religious you are, conventionally how much you meditate or chant or whatever like that, if it's really, really, really who you are, it will shine to light. What Whoever you really are is going to be pronounced in your actions. But if like it's whatever you really are, so if it's this is really who you are, it's gonna show. If this is re and obviously if you're running a Saturn Dasha, it's going to show more than if you're not running a Saturn Dasha, right? But in general, this is kind of the flavor here that can show. Uh, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that I did not cover? No, that's it, okay? Oh, actually, no, there is one thing. I mentioned throughout the video that, you know, when the nodes were here, you were kind of forced to do some things. This is kind of that you need to do, okay? So I just said who you really are is going to show. Now, if you are, conv if you if it's really who you are, be this a spiritually elevated person, there's going to be, the reason why it's really going to show is there's going to be karmas kind of shown to you that you need to do and you'll probably, it all, like I said, it depends on your dashas, but you'll you'll be shown what you need to do, okay? And hopefully you you do. Um, now, if you're not, right, we're, we're still, 
we're still always on the path, I would like to say, of spiritual elevation. So even if you're not directly on a great spiritual path, you're still kind of shown what you need to do. Okay, but the reason why I said who you actually truly are will show is because of that. What If you're not on the best path, but it's still kind of who you are, you'll, you'll kind of change course a little bit. If you're not on the bet and that's not who you are, you'll kind of be shown what to do, but you'll kind of try to avoid it and it will cause uh, disaster as Saturn usually does. Okay. So I think that's it for this video. Um, yeah. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know. And until next time, I'll talk to everyone later. Thank you all very, very much for watching.